Hey everyone, how's it going today? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a Dodge Journey. It's not what I'm in right now, but I got a Dodge Journey and I replaced the thermostat housing and the formed coolant hoses that go to like to the heater core and for the rear heat and stuff like that. It's a 2.4 liter. The customer wanted me to change the catalytic converter. And I said, instead of changing a cat, let's just put the O2 sensors in it first. Because 60% of the time, 65% of the time maybe, if I change O2 sensors in it, it straightens out the problem. Because he has a cat efficiency code. Now, I wanted to show this on the scanner. However, I don't want to get it hot. Because getting it hot to change O2 sensors is not fun. Um, so, I got my truck instead. Now, my truck needs cats. I know that for a fact. I won't pass inspection where I am unless I get cats put in this thing. So that's coming up soon to where I got to do that. I have a check engine light for cat efficiency in both banks. So that repair is going to be coming up soon. Um, so what I wanted to show you was the new scanner that I got, the um, CRP919EBT. I'll put a link in the description for it. Now this is a wireless scanner, whereas all the other scanners I have have a cable that run to the DLC. This uses a dongle. <laughs> What's a dongle? Well, this is a dongle this thing and it plugs in and it's a wireless piece that goes for the scanner itself now the only bad thing about that if you think about it is without this being hooked into the car itself let me show my light off hang on without this being hooked into the car itself there's no way to charge this if you think about it that way you actually have to have an external charger on it so i just started this up this is a launch product it comes in that nice heavy duty case there and this is sold through king bolin they actually just sent me another scanner that they want me to test. It's kind of in its uh, beta testing stage, so they want me to try that. It's more of a professional scanner, and that's, you know, it's a big dollar scanner. Um, but I'll get to that at some other point. Now, the thing that I've liked so far about all the launch and King Boland products that I've gotten is this. If you're hooked to the internet, okay, service or software update, you can go into that and you can do all your own updates. A lot of these things come with a one year, two year, or lifetime update. So this. See that? I got Chrysler, Dodge, Honda, Acura, Hyundai, and Genesis, Toyota, and Lexus. AC system relearn initialization, but that's not available. So, yeah, some of these other things are just not available at this time. These are all the ones that are available. So, but like I said, the nice thing about that is you could do it all on your own. Just hook to the internet and let it go, and it'll update. How simple is that? I hate to say it, but my Snap-on scanner, it... it nothing compared to this I'll be honest with you um, and I never ever thought I would say that uh, I love my snap-on tools I love my snap-on scanner but come on guys you could do better than that um, yeah anyway I'm not gonna go off on that right now so what I want to show you is on my truck I'm gonna go into this and diagnose so you have intelligent diagnostics basically what that does is like log you in to, to the to everything in here um, you hit that first, let it go through its thing, and then you're good to go. So now, local diagnose. I'm going to go to... See, now here's the thing. Okay, on this, some of the other scanners don't offer this, but on this, you have common, American, European, Asian, Chinese. So there's a lot of different vehicles you could do with this. So I'm just going to go to American, and I can go to Chrysler or Dodge. I, I believe they're both the same. It doesn't matter. And you would choose Chrysler, Dodge, either one for whether you have, uh, you know, Jeep, Ram, stuff like that. So we're going to hit OK. <clears throat> it always gives you this choice, but I always go into 16-pin because that's what you're using. That's a 16-pin connector down there. <clears throat> so Dodge... You could automatically search if you wanted to. I know this is an 05. It's a Ram truck. Who's use our Sprinter software to diagnose Dodge Sprinter vehicles? Okay, yeah. Sprinter is like in its own, a complete world of its own, so it tells you that. Let's go to... I don't want to go to System Scan. I want to go to System Selection. PCM. Now, let's see what the codes are. This truck actually stalled on me the other day out of the blue. 
I went into a parking lot, uh, went into the store, came back out. When I left, I drove maybe 75 feet, slowed down to go over a speed bump. When I went over the speed bump, all of a sudden she stalled. I don't know why. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to read fault code. DTC information, PO430, PO420. And that's it. It's the only two codes it has. All right, so I'm not concerned about that for right now. So we're going to hit the back button, which is this. Back button. Oh, that was the one nice thing, too, is it? I don't know if you saw that. It had freeze frame data. Freeze frame one. And there it shows you different parameters that were happening at the point. The freeze frame is, hey, when did that code set? There are two. Freeze frame caused by DTC PO420. Oops. Open loop, air intake, temperature, page three. Time from run was 1,082 minutes. Vehicle speed was 65 miles an hour. The only thing I don't like is, and it's because of the vehicle. If you don't see, oh, there it is, vehicle. The odometer was 4538. See a miscue there? You know why? Because the mileage doesn't read correctly because the PCM was changed on this vehicle. And the mileage was never updated. And I believe I can actually update it with this scanner. But I want to leave it alone because the computer was changed at the same time the engine was changed before I bought it. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's go to data stream. All right, long term, goal, goal, level, voltage. I'm going to go to bank one, sensor one, voltage. See, I don't know the difference between these two. Sometimes you got to like look. And see, let's just see what this shows me. Because sometimes it's easier to diagnose things. All right, so let's graph both of these. All right, so the zero to one is the easier one to read for what I want to look at now. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back. So the zero to one is the one we're going to use. Now that means bank one, sensor one. One dash one is bank one, sensor one. Bank one, sensor two. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at the other side. I'm only going to look at one side for right now. Bank two, sensor one. So. Bank one, sensor one. Bank one, sensor two. Yeah, I was reading it backwards. Um, bank one, sensor one. Bank one, sensor two. And then this is bank two, sensor one. Bank two, sensor two. Follow? I'm trying to make the video and do this at the same time. Sometimes you look at things incorrectly. All right, so. Graph. <sighs> <clears throat> So you see how they're kind of following one another? This one's doing a little something. So the cats aren't hollow, or at least this one isn't. If the cat was completely hollow, you wouldn't have these points here of it hanging up there. I mean, well, I mean, I guess it could be, but because you get some disturbance in it, but it's basically following one another. See how it hangs out up there? So the cats are pretty much dead on this thing. But the O2s are moving pretty freely. They're mo moving pretty nicely. And that's kind of what I wanted to show you. Now, this is not a scope. A lot of people make that mistake and think that, you know, when they're looking at this, oh, it's a scope. No, it's not a scope. It's a graphing meter. What does that mean? Okay, basically, when you... I'm going to go back real quick. When you go back... 
and you're looking at this information right here this is like a meter showing you information all right well you can kind of say okay i could see it going up and down but you know what it's not visual enough if you think about it but if you go to graph there your eye sees that much easier much better than the other way than just looking at the voltage numbers you know here you can actually see what's going on but how is that different from a scope because all this is doing is it's taking those numbers that the meter is showing and it's putting it into a graph form for you that's all it's doing if you had a let's say you had a broken wire okay and it was showing dead or you had like a high resistance in a wire and it was showing some whacked out reading, but now you go directly to the sensor, you know, not to the computer or whatever, because this is basically an interpretation of what the computer is saying. I may have misquoted myself, or misspoken there a little bit, but you understand what I'm saying. So that shouldn't be like that, not at all. It should be more like that section right there, not this up and down stuff. So could the cats be hollowed out? I don't know. I bought the truck used. Anything is possible. Well, if it's hollowed out, how come it's doing that? Well, when you have a chamber where it's supposed to be a cat and the exhaust is flowing into it with them hollowed out, like people for some reason think you hollow out a cat, you get performance. Not necessarily. If they're plugged, yes. These might have been plugged. I don't know. But if you have a correctly operating cat what happens is the, the um, material in there actually straightens out the exhaust flow as it goes through. So now instead of it going into a chamber, um, like picture a shotgun blast, it like, you know, it goes outward. And now it goes outward, it hits the ends of the chamber and it bounces around and it still has to go through the tube. It'll never work right, it'll never flow correctly. But the, the material in there from the cat, like the actual, um, whatever the heck the stuff is called that's inside the cat is like a honeycomb shape that flows through and it's like a straight shot so the exhaust hits it from one side and then goes straight through it to the other side so like i said either you have a straight shot through because of the material or if it's gone you get it like bouncing around you can actually lose power that way back in the day back in the 90s i actually proved this i had a mustang you know, i've told you all about the mustangs i had a number of them and what I did on one of them was I hollowed out the cats. I had plenty of sets of cats. I just wanted to see what it would do. I took the car to the track many times. In stock form, the car would run a 14.1 in a quarter mile. I hollowed out the cats. I couldn't get that thing to run better than a 14.5. It slowed down. And it was noticeable. You could feel it. Like, it sounded louder. You know, like, like a cold air intake. It sounds louder, so you think it's faster? Nope, slow down. I went back to work to the shop that I had, and I put another set of cats back on the car, and you could feel it in the seat of your pants. Like the car felt faster because it didn't have that chamber for the exhaust to go into and bounce around, and then have to get forced back through the pipe. Had I put a straight pipe through it, yeah, it might have it might have changed something. <clears throat> Eventually, that car got an H pipe, you know, stuff like that. Because back then, going through the um, uh, testing for it, you know, if it passed a tailpipe test, who cared if it had a actual cat on it? And the car passed the tailpipe test with, without a cat. And that's how things were back in the day. But nowadays, you actually have to do a visual check. Hey, is the cat still there? Back then, it wasn't really, it wasn't required. Not where I was. Eventually, it did go, it did change to that because too many people were doing stuff like what I had done back then. But that was a long time ago. So, anyway, I wanted to show you that. Um, let's see, what else can we do with the scanner? Let's see. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's just see. Special function. Oh, check PCM odometer. Let's see. Mile. Engine must not be running. Okay. Let's go back. Odometer is between 97,561 and 97,462. Obviously, that's not correct, but I'm leaving that alone. Why? Because I have the paperwork for when this engine was changed. And when this engine was changed, that engine had a documented, like, 
30,000 miles, 34,000 miles, 27,000 miles, something like that, but I have the paperwork for it. So this computer is from that same truck. So this mileage matches the engine. Not that I'm ever going to sell the truck, but I want to keep it like that just for my own just for my own knowledge. It doesn't hurt anything with the vehicle being as the mileage is incorrect here. I can change it if I wanted to. I'm not going to. So we're just going to say yes. Uh, okay, you can relearn cam crank. You can clear, do a battery disconnect. We're not going to worry about any of that. Um, what's the battery disconnect? Pretty much what it says. When you do a battery disconnect and you discharge all the capacitors and stuff like that, that's kind of what the, that does. Um, all right, let's... We have OBD functions. I'm not concerned about any of that right now. I'll get more into this as time goes on with the scanner. All right, you have mode one, two, four, all these different modes that have to do with OBD. I don't know all of them. I never had a reason to know all of them. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. What are some, all these different things, but obviously this truck is a pretty base model. So it doesn't have a lot of this. Special function. All right, so now you could do ABS bleeding with this. The electronic throttle sensor reset, that's for like when you replace a throttle body or a pedal or something like that. It needs to relearn the positions to make sure everything's good. You could do immobilizer key programming, which is awesome. Uh, tire pressure sensors, you can reset it. Adaptive front lighting system, which I've already gone into that. What that, um, if I'm not mistaken, hold on a second. Okay, no, I'm, I was wrong. Uh, let's see. That adaptive front lighting, I'm not exactly sure what that is. I think on some of the higher-end models, it had, um, like if they had, did they have air suspension? I'm not quite sure. But there was a bunch of different stuff. Let's just see. System selection. BCM. Enable daytime running lights. I already did that. Combination combination R stop and turn lamps what the heck is that I don't even know what that is oh okay that that's for trailer hitch stuff that's what that's all about because on some vehicles you have a separate turn signal bulb and a separate brake light bulb this combines the two and there's a circuit back there that you could tie into for like a seven-way plug, if I'm not mistaken, or even the even the the four-way, um, and that's what that's for. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. But there's a lot of different things you could do with this scanner. So um, I'm going to get more into that as, as time goes on. But as for right now, I just wanted to show you that. But this is a pretty darn good little scanner. Um, nice thing too is it has a camera there. You can take photos of stuff. You can actually go into. You can actually go into, like, I got to learn this. I'm still learning it. There's just a whole bunch of different things. Exit the current diagnostics. Okay. Uh, how do I exit? Just got to back all the way out. I'm sure there's a way to actually exit, exit. I just don't know it. And this. All right. That's cool. Do you understand that? Don't forget to remove the VCI from the vehicle. That's the VCI. You walk away from the vehicle with this and you get too far away, that chime will start going off, telling you, hey, don't forget it, which is a good thing because think about it. Think about how easy it is to lose that and forget about it. Um, <clears throat> let me just see something here. Let me go back to home. So there's a whole bunch of different things if the vehicle is equipped that you can do. Coolant bleed. Some vehicles have electric coolant pumps. 
for like the secondary cooling system. Or like if you have rear heat, like sometimes the water pump itself is not adequate enough to actually force the coolant to the back for um, to have rear heat. So some vehicles will have a secondary electric pump. So coolant bleed is there. Um, let's see. Power balance monitoring, gas particulate filter regeneration for like certain diesels, high voltage batteries for some, um, whoops, no, I don't want to do that, for some, uh, high voltage battery for some um, hybrids and electric vehicles, oil maintenance reset, seat occupancy calibration uh, for passenger airbag systems. <clears throat> injector coating that's really good too because some injectors you have to actually code to make sure that they'll work in the vehicle um intelligent cruise control you could change the language if you want to knock center reset tire reset tpms reset transport mode transport mode is uh sometimes you got to put vehicles into transport mode to ship them steering angle reset window calibration yeah there's a lot of things you could do with this scanner i mean a lot this scanner is I believe 500 bucks hands down better than my snap-on sorry guys hate to say it hands down better and what what's that eight times less expensive than my snap-on was and my snap-on I gotta pay for every re, every um, um, update and you gotta do it twice a year it's a thousand dollars or you could do the subscription like I do which is 50 bucks a month but even still I hate to say it snaps but I don't need you anymore. Not for this. Um, so, yeah, I'm very happy with this one. And like I said, I have another one that they just sent me. It's called a K10. And it's kind of in a beta testing stage, uh, but it's just about done. So I'm going to be showing you that one next. So I'm going to get on to that journey. I'm going to change the O2 sensors. And then we're going to look at that one. I might actually use that K10 on that one. We'll see. All right, guys, hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Look down in the description, and you'll you'll see the links. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.